Welcome everyone. Six tips picking your first crawler. So maybe you just got into the hobby. Maybe you've been into other aspects of radio control, whether it's planes, drones, um, you know, maybe racing and you've seen some crawlers and you've done some research and you want to get into it, but you don't really know where to start. So this episode is going to kind of focus on uh, six tips and kind of how I would go about figuring out what you want and what you should get. I'm not going to really throw out brands as far as telling you, you should buy this particular vehicle. You should buy this particular vehicle. You know, everybody's going to have their own opinions. Um, currently, I'm running a Traxxas and I have other brands on the way. Um, this is just what I have now. But I will talk a little bit about the Traxxas and then I'll also mention a couple other brands as well to keep an eye out for and uh, we'll go from there. So let's get started with tip number one. Number one, set a budget. Everybody's budget is going to be different. Some people can spend $200, some people can spend $500, some people will be able to spend $1,000 plus. Don't worry so much about what other people have as far as costs go or, or what they're running and how much they've spent, don't be discouraged. You can get into the hobby for relatively cheap. Uh, there's a lot of different brands out there that have, you know, budget friendly models. So do some research, look at what they are, what they, you know, the value of them and go from there. Sometimes it is better to spend a little bit more to get a little bit higher quality. Um, but you know, everybody has to start somewhere. So everyone's going to be different, but the biggest thing I can say is don't overspend. If you overspend, you'll tend to not be as excited about getting it if you went over where you wanted to be. So let's say you you set $500 is what I want to spend. I don't want to spend any more than that. I want to spend 500 bucks, give it a shot, see how I like it. And you find something really cool that you like and it ends up being seven or $800 and you say, well, who cares? Let's just do it. You may find you buy it and you might have remorse right away uh, while you're waiting for it to come. It comes, you might not be as excited, you might not use it as much, you might not be as into it as you thought you were, and now you spent more money that you didn't want to spend up front, and you know, it's just not good overall. So what I would say is definitely stick to a budget, figure out what you want to spend. If, if 500 is your max, stick with that number, look for things under that that are still valuable and you know quality builds and see what you go you know what you like from there uh, one tip I will say uh, as far as budget goes and something I've done in the past with hobbies is if you have old hobbies you're not doing anymore if you have um, things laying around your house throw it up on eBay throw it up on Craigslist Facebook marketplace um, I sell random stuff that I've had laying around that I haven't touched in a long time. You can see some guitars back there. I tried getting into that a couple months ago. I, I went a little overboard, bought a few too many. And what I've been doing, getting back into radio control, has been just, I sold a couple guitars and was able to, to pick up some of the rigs that I wanted to get into again. And, you know, that's one example. People are into video games, um, Legos, maybe they got some clothes, no new shoes that they haven't worn that they can sell. Things like that, man. People buy stuff all the time on Facebook Marketplace. And, um, you know, just be smart about doing it if you're meeting people locally. But other than that, it's a great way to get some extra cash to put into your new hobby um, and go from there. All right, tip two, research, right? You might be spending a lot of money, you might be spending a little bit of money, but no matter what you're going to spend, research what you're buying. Nothing's worse than buying something because someone said, oh, you should buy this. Picking it up and then finding out it doesn't really do what you want it to do or it doesn't really fit into the class you want to run. Um, my big thing I run are, I like scalers, meaning I tend to run 1.9 scale tires, um, rigs that look that they could be real. Um, that's my style. Uh, other people want straight up competition, four wheel steering, just crawl over anything that they can. And, and that's great too. So definitely research brands. What brands are you looking at? Axel, um, RC four wheel drive, Traxxas, Cross RC, you know, Dur Duratrax I think makes a couple uh, 
cheaper beginner crawlers. Um, look at the brands, see what they offer you. And then from the brands, you gotta look at the different models that they offer. So the example I'll use is Traxxas, right? So the Traxxas is a TRX-4, is their crawler. Um, the, the standard ones have some more features than the TRX-4 Sport does, but the TRX-4 Sport is about $150, I think it is, different. So you're gonna spend a little bit less money. It's still a very capable rig. Um, so that might be where you wanna go. You might not want the additional features of the more expensive vehicle. So definitely look at what each offers. You know, there's trade-offs, obviously. Spending spending $340 on a TRX4 Sport versus spending $450, $460 on a, the TRX4 Defender, um, Bronco, or $400 for the tactical, you know, there's different things involved with each of those. So definitely see what you get. As I know Axel has the um, SCX-10 II out now. They had the older the SCX-10 was the original one. So there's there's upgrades and, and new features that they've added. So definitely look at what you're getting for your money and, and what you want. One thing I would recommend is um, don't rush into it do research, post. There's a lot of Facebook uh, groups out there. There's uh, forums. You know, the big one I'm on is rccrawler.com. Uh, I've been on there since 2006. There's a huge amount of knowledge and people willing to help you in those aspects of, of you know, what you're looking for. So definitely don't be afraid. Get on, sign up, ask questions. And the biggest thing I can say when you get onto a forum or a message board is read. So many people have asked the same questions you're going to ask. What rig should I get? How much should I spend? You know, what does this one do differently than this one? Definitely get on there. There's a lot of, I know on Crawler, there's a lot of um, individual boards or, or forums or, or sub forums for different rigs. So there's one for the Traxxas TRX4. There'll be one for Axial. There'll be one for Duratrax and so on. So definitely get out there when you narrow it down to a couple that you like, start researching those more heavily to see what you're really drawn to. That would be that would be my recommendation. That's what I've done. And as you progress in the hobby and you get more familiar with different running gear and, and brands and, and things you want, um, you'll start to kind of know where you want to go with rigs. And eventually you might get to the point where you want to build your own. You want to get a kit, you want to get all the electronics separately, and you want to go from there. And that is great. There's nothing wrong with starting with a ready-to-run. I've been in the hobby forever, and I'm running a, a bone stock ready-to-run TRX4, and I'm having a blast. So there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anyone tell you what you need to have and, and what you shouldn't get. Everybody's going to have their own opinions. Uh, so do the research for yourself. Make an informed decision, and you're going to be happier in the long run. All right. Number three, ask friends and local guys what they're running, what they like, what they dislike, and go from there. The best thing you can do, if you guys see people out there running RC crawlers, don't be afraid to go up and ask. My experience in the hobby has been people want to help you. People want to share their, their rigs and tips and ideas. And I can't tell you the, the countless times I've been out running um, in local parks. Uh, we've done, you know, we used to do competitions at local like state parks and things like that where there's, you know, it's summer, there's people out there picnicking and they're curious. There's 20 guys running what look like little trucks and they want to see what's going on. And, and I've given my controller to, you know, kids who want to check it out and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's great to see the smile that it puts on their face, but it's also nice to introduce somebody new to the hobby. So never be afraid to go up, introduce yourself, ask, you know, what what rig is this? I'm, I'm into crawlers. I'm looking at getting one. What are you running? What can you tell me about it? Likes, dislikes, uh, any tips? How's the quality? Things like that. I will sit there and talk to you for hours and and let you run it. Uh, you know, I, I think that's the experience I've had with the group of people I've run with. Everyone's really friendly. No one's, uh, you know, Scrooge McDuck. We, we want to share the information. We want to share 
our our rigs we want to show off our rigs you know we're proud of them especially people who have built their their scalers and added details and stuff like that they want to show them off you know so definitely don't be afraid to ask other people what they think and your local hobby shop know your local hobby shop is going to have certain brands that they they carry and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but you know get a wealth of information from different sources that that's the best information I can give you and you're to be ahead of the game the more information you you get and you can absorb the other good thing to know with you know local guys running is you'll kind of get an idea of the quality of parts you know if if 10 people are running Traxxas and you have another six or seven people running axle based rigs and that's going to give you a huge amount of information for those two specific rigs. Those guys running Traxxas are going to be able to tell you, you know, oh, well, this has been great, but this hasn't worked so well. Or, oh, on this axle, um, you know, this was really good, but you know, I don't like these, these axle cases or the gears might not have been good or, or whatever the case is. And those, those aren't things that happen. I'm just throwing out ideas. But, um, you know, for the instance, the, the Traxxas, I've heard the steering servo is kind of crap. It's, you know, it, it, it goes out really quickly. And if you, if you looked at everything I've read online about the steering servo, everybody and their mother are having issues with the steering servo. You're basically pulling out of the box and you're turning once and the servo is breaking and, and you're, you're screwed. you got to go pick up something else. And... You know, I, ha I don't have a lot of time on the rig, um, but so far I've had no issues. I've had it in water. I've had it out on the rocks. Uh, you saw in my other video that I posted yesterday. And, um, you know, it wasn't too much rocks. It was more mud and more of a trail kind of run with roots and stuff like that. But it was great, you know, for the couple hours I ran it out there. It was it had no issues. And will it fail? It might. It might. You never know. Um, everyone's going to have different experiences and, and everyone's going to run their rig differently. Someone who's going out there, throwing in a second gear or low gear and just bashing into everything is going to have probably less of a, a lifetime of quality of servos than someone who's more careful with their placement of tires and they're maybe going slower. They're, they're doing more scale-like crawling, uh, which is I really like to do. Uh, it, it photographs and films really well. And that's more my style. Don't be too afraid if if you hear a lot of bad things about a, a quality brand. Um, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, Traxxas, it's not even good for beginners. It's expensive and stuff. And, and my experience, I've had a lot of different vehicles over the years, whether it's crawlers or, um, you know, race vehicles that I used to run a lot of uh, off-road racing, electric, nitro, things like that. And, you know, there's good and bad in every company. Um, I've had good luck with most of the different brands I've run, and I've run a lot of different brands. So I'm not brand specific. I'm not brand loyal, but I've had good experiences with everything. I've had some bad experiences with brands, but um, you know it's not something that happens often. So definitely take what people say with a grain of salt, but also you know keep keep it in the back of your mind. Do your own research and make your own assumptions and, and decide what makes sense for you. Number four, what is your goal, right? You might think, what do you mean, what is your goal? I want to get out there. I want to rock crawl. I want to go have fun. Well, that's your goal. Some people might have ideas of the type of rig they want right off the bat. I want um, a vehicle that looks... Like it's a real vehicle, one-to-one, -one, you can barely tell the difference. Well, that person might want a hard-bodied, meaning made out of um, you know plastic, styrene, something along those lines that you paint on the outside. They might want a hard-body scaler with full interior, lights that work, maybe even a sound module. Um, and that's what they're going for, just that scale rig and that look that they want. Others want something like that, but they want something maybe a little more capable. You know, they don't want leaf sprung suspension. They want four length suspension so they get more articulation and they can really make it do more stuff. And while they like hard bodies, they want a Lexan body because it's 
gives you a lower center of gravity and it still looks great. It can take a beating and you know you can you can do more with it maybe than you can a, a, a hard bodied crawler. Uh, and that's fine. If that's what you want, go for it. Some people want straight up comp rigs. They want four wheel steering. They want the biggest tires they can get and they want to climb over the gnarliest stuff out there. And that's great. But you don't want to buy um, uh, just a straight up big old competition rig with four wheel steering and, and you know dual motors or whatever the case is if you really want a scale crawler because you're going to buy it you might run it once or twice and have fun with it but you're always going to come back to what you originally wanted i've done this countless times before so take it from me if you want a scale rig kind of focus on scale rigs people's minds change and they're they're their ideas of, of what they want change as they go, and that's fine. But if for a month you've just talked about scale rigs and watched videos on scale rigs and and haven't even cared about any other aspect of it, and then the first time you're able to go out there and, and pick something up, you buy this other vehicle just because maybe it's a little bit cheaper, and you maybe, yeah, I don't want to spend that money. I'm just going to get this, and it'll do. But it's not what you want. Keep that in mind because every time I've done that, I've always gone back and thought, man, I should have bought this originally. I should have bought what I wanted because that's what I want to do and, and that's the p particular rig that I wanted. So definitely keep that in mind and, you know, people's goals change. I really like scale rigs. Um, I love the, just the style. I love the idea that this could be something that's going down the street right now. Someone could own something like this and it's it's cool to me um but that doesn't mean i don't want to compete so i can compete in the scale class with something like this a lot of clubs locally have you know different rules and things like that and going back to um tip three is you know having those local people and local clubs if you know you want a scale rig um find out and you want to run it in competitions Definitely find out rules and stuff like that. Some they have to be stocked. Some you can do certain upgrades to them. So definitely find out how those guys run it and, and see what makes sense for you. But going back to your goal, if you want a scale rig, get a scale rig. You want a comp crawler, go get a comp crawler. I've had everything in between. I've had huge, you know, super class crawlers that um, could get up crazy boulders you would never think they could. And I've had a lot of scale stuff and, and I tend to kind of draw myself to the scale stuff more um it's more my style it's more my speed i dig it a lot of the guys that i run with run 1922 scalers and um you know to each your zone there's no wrong answer get what you like because if you get something that you like you're going to be happier running it number five go with your gut Right, kind of going back to what is your goal, and you know, if you like scalers, get a scaler. If you like a comp rig, go towards a comp rig. But go with your gut. Um, the example I can give you is this Traxxas here. So I looked at the Land Rover. I looked at the Bronco. There's some differences between the two. Not much. Um, there's this is a little higher center of gravity on the Land Rover uh, than the Bronco. The Bronco is a little shorter wheelbase. Um, but other than that, they're almost the same. They're the same um, gear-wise as far as how they run their performance, um, as far as electronics, servos, uh, locking diffs, things like that. But, um, you know, going up the same obstacle, both of those will do things slightly different, just based on a wheelbase, um, center of gravity, the weight distribution, things like that. So definitely go with your gut. Um, I, I ended up picking up this locally because I was looking for something to get out there right away with and get back into it. And even though I had looked at the Bronco online, I said, no, I, I always like Land Rovers. I've built a couple in the past. Let's go with the Land Rover. I'm gonna have a blast with it. And I am having a blast with it, but every time I see a video of the Bronco, I've been like, oh man, I still want the Bronco. So definitely go with what you want, go with what you like and your your gut instinct. If I had gone with my gut instinct, yeah, I might have had to wait another couple days to for it to arrive, uh, or the shop could have ordered it for me. But um, you know that instant gratification uh, for me was I wanted to get out there, get it, go run it, and have fun, and I, and I was able to do that. And 
in the long run, I ended up picking up the Bronco anyways. So I'll have an unboxing video of that in the next few days once it arrives. And um, it'll be interesting to compare them and get them out there together and, and see how they run and, and, and see where they go. Um, you know, if one's much better than the other, I know there's some clearance differences between the Bronco and overhangs and stuff like that as far as definitely like rear, um, rear bumper and stuff like that. So it'll be curious to see how that plays out. But either way, I'm having a blast. They're both really fun. And, um, you know, it, it's a great rig to get into the hobby with again. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Last but not least, have fun. If you're not having fun, why are you doing it? I do this because I really like it. I like the people. I like the community. I like the the companies that are putting together these rigs now it has come so far back from 2006 and 2007 when i was into it heavily and even before then to now we used to take tlt axles from a tamaya tlt and make our own links with all thread make our own chassis you know find bodies that department stores for the hard bodies that we would want to run and we used to have to figure out everything how to mount things how, how this works how that works is a group setup good do you want a four link do you want to do um uh, leaf springs and it was it was a lot of fun and it really is part of what got me into scalers the the idea that you can take an idea and think well i want to make this and and put it together and and do it and I'll overlay some photos here of some of my other rigs that I've built, um, but I've done a lot of different things. I've done a lot of minor hard bodies. Um, that's just what I preferred. Um, I've done FJ Cruisers. I've done Mercedes uh, AMG um, G Wagon. I've had tubed FJ40. I had Jeep Wranglers. You know, so on and so forth. You name it, I've probably owned it. I've tried six by sixes, building those before you can buy a kit and, and get those. Um, but there's a lot of different stuff out there now and there's really something for everyone. So definitely make sure you're having fun. If, if you're not having fun, you're not gonna enjoy getting out there. You're not gonna get out there. You're not gonna wanna get up in the morning and go, hey, it's a nice day. Let's take my rig and get out there and crawl. Let's call Johnny or Jimmy and, and let's see if they wanna get together and and get out there and have a have a good time and it's always more fun with friends if you can if you can find some like-minded people who have them and want to get out there and like i said find clubs in your area because getting out there with 20 other people and running a trail is super super fun honestly you can get out there you can spend hours and hours running a trail so you come up to an obstacle that one person's having issues with and you have 10, 15, 20 other people that are kind of there to be able to help you um, watch what you're doing and give you tips. And I found that invaluable. You know, being able to to watch somebody run and saying, hey, maybe, you know, you want to give it a little more gas to bump up here. And this is why. Or you might want to go slower on this obstacle because when you get to here, blah, blah, blah. It's super fun to be able to just get out there with a bunch of people and, and just have a blast and and you know whether you're mudding whether you're going in water whether you're really trying to find just scale rocks and get those great sh slow motion sh shots especially look really cool with the suspension bouncing around and stuff but just make sure you're having fun if you're not having fun you're not going to want to do it and um you know you're going to lose interest quickly guys thanks for watching i really appreciate it I would love it if you guys hit the subscribe button, um, the little bell icon to make sure you are aware when I post new videos, and definitely like the video, post your comments. You guys want to see certain things, uh, you guys have questions, please post in the comments. I will keep an eye on it. <clears throat> I'll look at everything. Um, I'll answer you guys back. Um, I'm hoping to really get out there and post content weekly, hopefully multiple times a week, and just keep things coming out. What I have coming up next is I have the Bronco that should be here this week, and I also have the uh, Cross RC Mammoth, which is the 8x8. So that should be coming here hopefully in the next couple days, uh, depending on how the... Um, 
postal service or wherever it's coming through is with you know the holidays coming up so hopefully i'll have that i'm going to do some building videos of that as well as uh obviously running videos as soon as that's ready to go so we'll get that out there with some of these and um you know, just have a good time and, and get some cool footage for you guys to check out. Keep on keeping on, guys. Thanks.